Leonardo da Vinci is an artist from Florence, and in many ways he's very typical of artists for, of the time. He uh, started his career as an apprentice to an older artist. He learned a variety of different arts, sculpture, painting, drawing, architecture as well. And this is something that most artists of the day did learn. He was unusual in the breadth of his interests. He, in many ways, was as much a scientist as he was an artist. He was interested in what made things work, how they were put together, what the secrets of nature and technology were. Uh, and in all the art that he pursued, he takes that scientist's eye. So whether he's painting the Mona Lisa and trying to work out the principles of perspective and how to represent a, a three-dimensional person in a two-dimensional space, or whether he's looking at a flying machine um, or some other mechanical invention, it's always, he's always trying to uncover the, the natural secrets of an object or a person or an animal or a plant uh, in order to understand how it works and then in order to be able to reproduce it as an artist um, in his own right. So he combines the scientific progress of the Renaissance as well as the artistic inspiration all in, in his own peculiar genius. Ezio and Leonardo da Vinci become uh, friends at the start of our game and that friendship develops and evolves over the course of the story. Um, they balance each other out like extremely well. Their personalities are similar enough that they can get along, uh, but different enough that each can challenge the other and encourage the other to sort of, you know, become a better person. Uh, there's been some talk that Leonardo functions to uh, as Ezio's cue. You know, if Ezio was Bond, then then Leo would be his cue. Um, but I'd like to think that it's it's more than that. You know, they're not just people working together. They are, in fact, really close friends. Uh, each saves the other on numerous occasions. Um, they spend a lot of time opening up to each other and discussing their, their various you know, personal dramas and helping each other work their way through it. Um, and so what we didn't want to do was turn Leonardo into an assassin. Um, so he's not necessarily fully aware of what it is that Ezio's going through over the course of the story. And you know he'll often be asking him a lot of questions about this. Ezio's sort of hesitant to open up to him about this because how do you tell your friend that you're essentially a, you know a killer um, that's going around murdering uh, you know Renaissance uh, nobles? But it's uh, it's something that that Ezio has to deal with. And so over the course of the game, like uh, we'll see that sort of struggle. Um, between trying to, to be good friends and at the same time having to keep these secrets. I think Ezio and Leonardo would have been friends. It was very common in this period for artists and uh, wealthy young men to mix and to mingle with one another. Artists at this time had a lot of education. They were learning uh, the secrets of perspective and um, ancient techniques of, of drawing and sculpting. They had a kind of classical education in their own right. And this was something that, that well-born young men of the time were, were sharing as well. Sometimes young men uh, would actually grow up um, together in households. We know that uh, Michelangelo, as a young man, grew up in the Medici Palace and learned and took his lessons alongside the young Medici princes. Um, so this was, it was considered a, a kind of a noble and a good thing for artists and young men to mix and to get to know one another. Leonardo's role in the game is, uh, he, he's a confidant to, to Ezio, he's a trusted friend at a time where Ezio doesn't seem to have many left. Um, at the very beginning of the game. He helps him develop specific weapons. He helps him unsolve mysteries. I'm not going to get into that too deeply. Uh, and he also uh, makes uh, his crazy inventions that help Ezio uh, during, throughout the game. Well, Leonardo was a student in Verrocchio's workshop up until 1476. And uh, it's funny because between 1476 and 1481, there's not a lot that we know about what um, Leonardo did. But actually what really happened is that the Auditori family, Maria Auditori, uh, who is a huge fan of Leonardo, used to buy a lot of paintings for him and so many paintings that she had to have Ezio carry these paintings. So that's how they initially got to know each other. So Ezio would 
uh, escort his mother to Verrocchio's workshop. They would meet Leonardo, chit chat, ha ha ha, get the paintings and leave. And in uh, 1476, the auditories actually uh, patron Leonardo to open his own workshop. So history doesn't know between 1476 and 1481 what happened with Leonardo, but what actually happened is the auditories uh, paid him to start his own workshop. So sometimes Ezio and Leo will discuss the fact that Leo seems to be building, you know, implements of murder for uh, for his good friend. And history has shown that Leonardo was not exactly a fan of either, you know, warfare or destruction. You know, he saw himself as a creator, as an inventor, as someone that was trying to create things to make the world a better place. And so there is this tension um, in, in that he's now building weapons for someone. And this is a guy that doesn't really enjoy building weapons. At the same time, though, he understands what Ezio has been through because the tragedy that befalls Ezio is, you know, a matter of, of public knowledge, even if, if Leonardo doesn't know all of the details. And eventually, you know, he'll come to understand, you know, what's going on. And because Leo, much like Ezio, is like a very progressive person, he lives by this, you know, idea of like, I'm not going to judge you. Um, and so even when things finally do come to a head, we wanted to avoid that cliche moment where, you know, Leo would say, oh, I can't believe that, you know, this is what you're doing and, uh, and I can't be near you. And then he goes off and Ezio has to go and find him. He just sort of listens to what Ezio has to say, processes it and says, you know, it's okay. I still, I still accept you. I still, I still consider you my best friend. We, without a doubt, his main friend and confidant would be Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, he, uh gets to know him at the very beginning of the game, and they grow together throughout the game. We represent Leonardo very accurately in the things that have been proven accurately uh, historically. For example, uh, s small details like he used to write and paint with his left hand are uh, respected. Uh, things that are numerously, uh, new at, at numerous times documented uh, his personality. He was a very, very kind person. He was a very uh, gentle and funny person, and uh, that is uh, represented as well.